Hello, this is our Archicad series. Um, right now we're going to show you how to do a simple uh, cross section. We're going to show you how to create it and then we're going to show you how to edit it. So what you're going to notice is I already have two cross sections made. I've got a typical wall started and I've got a stair model started. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave those alone for a minute and show you how to create the, the cross section in the first place. Well, here's the deal. We need to go in and find where we need one. Well, we can't just throw them in willy-nilly. We have to actually have a point to them. I've got one down here. This is our second one, actually, that actually shows the cross-section through the wall and the framing there. This is the first one. It actually shows the framing of the stairway. So I need one other, um, probably. I'm going to sh shoot it right here through the garage wall. Because it is a typical wall, but it does not have... Um, it's got slab on grade, and it's got a footing under it. So we're going to use that for right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and under my document tools, so I'm going to minimize my design tools, under my document tools, I have my section tools. Under my section tool, I usually go in here and I, before I do anything else, I set it the way I want it. I got a zero depth or an infinite depth. I don't care which one you use. I use, tend to go infinite depth, um, but while I'm at it, I like to change my marker. I only want one marker. In this case, I usually go with whichever, okay? Um, I'm going to put one on it is all. Um, I don't want the marker in the middle, I don't want it segmented. I'm going to leave it alone other than that. That way I've only got one marker to deal with, one to worry about getting in the way of other information I need to worry about. So I'm going to click right here and I'm going to cut a section through this wall that is the garage wall and then I'm going to just look out here to my right. There's my marker, there's my cut line, I've got that stuff taken care of. Now if I want to I can actually come in on this one right here, click on the marker and move it in a little bit, not stretch it, I'm going to actually move it by using my tools here. Um, that way it doesn't interfere with any lines on any layers because I've got multiple layers here I'm worried about. So I'll check on my second floor layer, it doesn't interfere with any lines there. I'll check on my foundation layer, it doesn't interfere with any lines there. We're good to go. So now, it's a simple section right here, section number five, I'm going to pull it up. There it is. Now, if I want to look at this, my slab actually cuts into the wall. Now, because of the way this program's written, I can actually maneuver, maneuver that a little bit. I'm going to move that out so it actually butts up to the wall and is the correct form. Now, other than that, I've got a compacted fill under my garage. So, before I get too far into this, I'm going to go in and do a couple things. First thing, I'm going to use the fill tool to put in some compacted fill. Well, in this case, I've got to come in here and it's not going to be earth. It's going to have to be compacted fill. So as I look through this, I'm going to look and see if I have any compacted fill. I don't want um, like filled stone, I want cut stone, I want compacted fill. I really don't see any here, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to use my gravel fill. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to just put in um, like a six inch fill of compacted gravel. I'm going to bring it right out here so it lines up at the end of this. And back up to there and back over to where I started. So there's my compacted fill. Now, after that, I will then use an earth fill. So I'm going to go back to my fill tool. I'm going to go right here on the end of this. I'm going to go right around my footing. So it shows where it's located. Now, this is going to come up. It's going to be level with the slab in the garage because, okay, let's be honest. We don't want our dirt to be higher than our garage. We don't want things draining in. Then I'm going to put out a slope. And I'm just going to eyeball my slope right now. Right now it really doesn't matter. Um, I'll put on an actual legitimate slope in a few minutes, but for right now, that's where we're at. So I'm just going to make up a random line that comes back um, to here. Uh, let's see if that lines up. And close that one. Now, that's gravel too. I don't want that one to be gravel, so I'll just edit the fill to be my earth fill. So I just got to go through my list and find earth, which is right there. There it is. Now, that's the start of my cross section. Now, a couple things have to occur. One right here, there's supposed to be a sole plate, so I don't have one. Now, I'm going to minimize this and get my design tools out. We spend a lot of time in our design tools actually up here into the detailer. So we go into general and I go to detail our library. Now, under my detailers, I've got connections to work with. I've got things like J-bolts and headers and anchor bolts and things like that there. I've got hold downs I can use. I've got insulation, um, different hangers I can put on it. Masonry units, blocks, common blocks, metal shapes, um, all kinds of different things I can put here. Under my wood, now this is mostly base molding if you notice. Brick molding, I have casing, I have 
corners I have. Um, coving, crown molds, and quarter rounds. I actually don't have anything for my sole plate, so I actually have to draw that the old-fashioned way. But while I'm here, I'm going to go back to my connectors, I'm going to get a J-bolt. Now these have to be a 10-inch J-bolt, which it defaults to, 5 8 inch, well, it only requires half right now, so we're good there. So I'm going to just take a J-bolt, and I'm going to drop it off right there for a minute. Now, to put my plate in here, I'm going to simply come over here, and I'm going to minimize up my design tools for a minute and get out my document tools, and I'm going to draw a shape. Well, my shape is going to be a simple line, and it's going to go from right here, over to this one, which is simple enough, straight up. Now this is going to go uh, basically two inches or, okay, 1.5 inches in reality. Okay, can you see the line? It's a little black one right there. Just click on the end of him, bring it over here, bring it from there, back straight down. Now I have to draw an X through it to show that it is a plate. Now what that is, is my sole plate in my wall. It has absolutely positively has to be there and it doesn't matter which cross section I'm doing that's got to be in there now it should have a washer on it um, for what you'll be able to see on the drawing I'm not going to worry about that too much okay but I'm going to put my J bolt straight on top of that so it shows and that's the start of my wall now here's the deal this little piece right here has to be there it is not something that's even optional yeah, otherwise we do not have a way to hook your foundation and your wall together now I am going to group those lines I've just made together so I can do this. I'm going to copy them. Okay, I'm going to do one for right now. Copy from there all the way up to the top of my wall, right there. Now I'm going to copy it down again. Oh, didn't take my copy command. There we go. So there's my double top plate for that wall. Everything else in between is the wall itself. Now in this case, it is my garage, but I am going to insulate it. So I simply come back to my line tool. Instead of a triple dash line, which is what I had uh, before, I'm going to come in and I'm going to find my insulation. Well, it's right there. It's a wave line. And I'm going to simply start right here at the top in the middle and draw it straight down through the middle of my wall until it touches just about the top of that bolt. Now, does that look right? No, that is actually a true wave line. So i got to come back in and find the actual insulation line, which is that one right there. That looks much, much, much better. Now, once that in place, I can then start worrying about some other things I need to do. Well, in this case, I never did put a ceiling in my garage. I've got a cross section cut through there, so I don't have a soffit, I don't have anything, I don't have a fascia board, I don't have a drip edge, I don't have shingles. All that has to be drawn on by hand. Now, after I've done that, then I have to go back and note everything so that all the notes show up correctly. Now, I'm going to show you one or two other things in the detailer menu before I turn you loose to work on your own. But, if your teacher will have supplied you with an example, and that example is really easy to use, I'm simply going to go in here and I'm going to drop off some rebar. Well, those don't show up there very well. So let's start with the obvious. That rebar is too small. So let's change his size. He's one inch. Well, he's only there for representation at this point. We're going to up his size to be two inches. Okay. Two inches. Ah, some property's been applied to those, so I cannot change them. We're going to try it again. Ah, that's better. There. So he supposedly is now a two inch. Eh, that's not going to work. If you look at it, it's not increasing the size at all. Okay? But we do need to have them there. We also need to have these arrayed in the wall. And there really, there's only enough room for about four of them. Yeah, probably three at every two feet. So I'm going to copy, and I'm going to tell it to... Um, create a matrix, now nah, let's go drag, and I'm going to distribute them, and I'm only going to make three. I'm going to click on this one, and drag straight up, three new ones, okay, drag them right up like so, and then I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to copy him, copy, I only want one this time, copy him from here to here, and then I'm going to click both of these, and I'm going to copy them, once downward. Now, that's how your wall gets put together. Now, there's also vertical rebar coming up and down through this wall. Now, one thing I haven't noticed is I need to mess with this a little bit. Um, this wall is actually not sitting exactly where it should be. That's better. 
Okay, here's what's going on. Um, my wall, my footing should be directly under my stem wall. So I'm going to tweak things around a little bit. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is moving things so that they line up a little better. do this and that way everything should line up much much better there we go I've got half my footing inside half my footing outside move this over a little bit move that over a little bit um, need another rebar that's somehow migrated down here okay we'll copy this one copy him okay now here's the deal these are supposed to be 5 8 inch diameter rebar at 24 inches on center vertically and horizontally so it basically makes a mesh inside the concrete wall that rebar like we talked about during our video on the science of structures is there to strengthen it so we're going to put in a little bit of rebar and then we're also going to say okay we do need it welded wire mesh or rebar in the footings so we're going to show that as well or in the slab I should say not the footings so I'm going to put in a couple of those as well I'm just going to simply click them and drag them out like so. And that's pretty much it. I just got to put in a vertical line, the J's under here, and another one that J's under here. And I'll show my rebar, and that's it. Now, other than that, you just put the notes on like the example shows you, and that's what we're up to. Thank you for your time. Bye.